Hi, everyone. It's Henry DeVries. Welcome to the Marketing with a Book podcast. And it's a special day today. We're going to talk about how to have more impact and influence. And we have a whole panel of experts today, a number of authors who are all looking to have more impact and influence in their field. So we're going to also open it up for that discussion and, and have some thoughts on that. We like to start with our author roundup roll call. So we're going to go through our authors and you can spend a little more time today. And um, we asked you for a little more on that, a little more insight um, into your world. And Mark, I'm going to ask you to help tee that up. Um, what, what would you like to hear from the, from the authors, Mark? Thank you, Henry. I think what I'd like to hear from the authors is, um, do you have a specific tip or strategy as to how you are using your book as a marketing tool? That's great. Well, let's start, we'll go with, uh, uh, and even if you're in the process of writing the book, the book's coming out, we'd love to hear, are you using the book now, the, the promise of the coming book to have more impact and influence in your world? So uh, why don't we go with, uh, we'll start with Art Zilstra, go to Chris Hodges, and then David Goldman. Yeah, I was trying to get my uh, video unlocked, but it wouldn't, uh, <laughs> wouldn't unmute. So I'm really looking to uh, some tips on kind of a, an overall strategy of my book leading to uh, consulting to my licensing world and to speaking gigs. So just making sure it's all coordinated is uh, really what I'm looking for. Art, give everyone the title of your upcoming book. So my upcoming book is called The Noble CFO, and um, it is scheduled uh, probably in July. We'll be uh, ready for publishing. Now, Art has an interesting play that a lot of you need to think about. I know Mark and I are thinking about it. I know Joe uh, Paolo is thinking about it. It's the licensing play where he's licensing people in his process and his way. Um, Art, did you have anything that you wanted to say on that? Um, so, yeah, it's just, it, this will start a new revenue stream for me. And so the book is, is uh, designed to start that revenue stream. And I'm, again, part of that is figuring out all the um, paperwork aligned with that and the marketing strategy to, to bring that in alignment with my book. Okay, great. Well, uh, I'll mention to Art and everybody, I have my author's retreat coming up June 17th and 18th, where I'll take about uh, a, do a dozen authors and Devin and I will just work with you over the course of two days on the plan to get more speeches and to have more impact. So if, you're, um, if you haven't received an invite to that yet and you're interested, please, uh, please let us know. Um, so, uh, let's go to, uh, Chris Hodges, um, and then David Goldman. Okay. Uh, Chris Hodges, my uh, art and I seem to have found the same word, although fortunately it is, uh, it is not the same topic. Um, the top or the title of my book is your noble robot. So we're going to have noble CFOs and noble, noble robots. And the, the entire point of that is to profit to retain people to innovate um, using automation in order to, to keep people in the company and, and delight people to the company. So what am I doing? What I have found very valuable in the marketing process of writing a book is reaching out to some very senior executives who have very important, good opinions that I need. And then it became very clear to me if I've used their really good opinions and included them in my book, why would they not be the first people I called to find out if they would like to have me come speak at their companies or do workshops at their companies to help their own executives move forward? And that may sound obvious to everybody, but it wasn't so obvious to me. Um, and that doesn't mean they'll all say yes, but I do think because I've included a lot of great wisdom from them, it could be, um, it could be very powerful for me. So that, that would be my takeaway. Great. Thanks, Chris. Um, David, 
And then um, let's go with uh, Jerry. Thanks, Henry. Uh, I'm David Goldman. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I wrote a book called The Road to Happiness, How to Get What You Really Want. It's nine stories of people who hired me in order to get uh, what they thought they wanted. And along the way, they got something much, uh, much better, much deeper, and, uh, and in essence, got everything that they wanted. The strategy I'm using is something that Mark LeBlanc calls the advocate strategy. And, and so what I'm doing is I have, um, I have a few centers of influence, about a dozen really good centers of influence in various markets. And I gift my book to them so that they can gift it to people who they think would be uh, good uh, potential clients for me. So it, it looks like they're giving the gift. Uh, I'm actually gifting it so that they can do that. And that has just been uh, exceptional. So thanks, Mark, for the idea. Thanks, Henry, for the help in publishing. And uh, I'm a pretty happy camper. Thank you, David. Uh, let's go to Jerry. Uh, Jerry was introduced to us by uh, Manly Feinberg, certainly a, a great author and member of the family. Uh, Jerry, why don't you tell people what you've got going? Uh, so my book, uh, you know, and <laughs> I, I'm the biggest rate limiter as to when it will be published. So, you know, hopefully sometime late this summer. Uh, the book is going to be called They Buy Your Because, Closing the Sale in Crowded Markets. And as background, I was an executive for some big brands. And now I speak about how to stand out in a really crowded marketplace and get people to buy from you. Um, and, uh, you know, my marketing stra strategy for the book is is pretty simple. I speak to a lot of audiences throughout the year, uh, you know, COVID notwithstanding, I guess. And uh, a lot of them have been just wanting me to do book signings and, and buy the book. And because I teach a framework and they want a, a resource uh, to use the framework in their companies. And of course, I do all the things that go with it. I do in-company sessions and, and multiple company workshops and things like that. But people would love to go away with something that they can just take it and say, I'm going to read the book. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to implement my company with this, this tool. Um, and so that'll be a nice resource for me to use with speaking clients when they want to buy one for everyone in the, in the audience or have me do a signing or, or whatnot. So, but, uh, you know, I love the idea of gifting the books to others so they can gift it on. That's, that's great. So thank you, uh, Mark and David by association and everyone. So yep, that's a little bit, did I answer the question, Henry? I almost missed the question in the beginning because I was trying to figure out my camera. Well, well, um, for you, you're a very successful speaker. You're one of the few authors I have that was still getting on airplanes in the last 12 months. Um, <laughs> how, how, how has it been uh, finding engagements and now getting engagements as we're coming out of this? Well, you know, what's been interesting is uh, I did my first sort of big, bigger stage keynote last Friday in Jacksonville, Florida, of course, because they have zero restrictions down there, but it was the kitchen cabinet manufacturers association. And we had a hundred people in the room, socially distanced, I would say, sort of. Um, luckily I'm fully vaccinated, so I feel okay. And I stayed far away from everybody. Um, but that was surprisingly early, I thought, for a big conference. But what has happened in my business is that, you know, I did a lot of virtual things, not for a lot of money, but just because people asked. And so I'm like, why not? I'm at home, I might as well do them. And what has happened over the course of this year is a lot more companies are starting to want me to come in and do in-company work. So my calendar is full now, not because speaking engagements have come back, but because this framework that is gonna be featured in the book is really working hard to get companies to want to implement it in their business. So I'm doing a lot of travel now in the next few weeks, going into businesses for small group sessions where they've all been vaccinated or they have a big training room or whatever. So that has started to pick up, not as much the speaking side, but the come in and help them side. Thank you. Um, before I go to Harriet and then Joe Paolo, Mark, I wanted to um, put you on the spot if I could, if you could um, open up here and unmute. Um, we had an earlier session today and you started it out very strong. Um, and I was gonna ask you if you could share with this group what you were saying about um, we need to quit talking about 
the horrible year we've been through. Uh, would you share a few words on that? Well, I, I sure can. Uh, you know, the, the challenge of COVID or 9-11 or 2008 or, you know, sometimes forces beyond our control that sometimes wipe out our calendar. And I prefaced it by saying there are three train tracks in your, in your business, a booking track, a delivery track, and a um, money track or cash flow track. And so even during the pandemic, when many of our calendars were wiped out, you know, people created stories about, uh, well, now's not the time to sell anything, or, you know, now's the time to give everything away for free. And quite frankly, I just think that's silly. Um, because the booking track can be, be just as strong during the pandemic or after 9-11 or in the you know, fall of 2008, but people made up stories. But what I, what I also said was, I'm hoping for the day when a speaker will not open up with, well, you know, it's been a pretty tough year. You know, it's time to probably let that go. Um, because half of the speakers and consultants and coaches out there retreated like frightened turtles in the last 12 months. But for everyone who had a disastrous year, I can give you a story of another speaker or trainer or consultant or coach who had the best year of their career, um, myself included, as well as Henry. Um, you know, I think we can share that inside the family, but I mean, the 12 months of COVID was the best, most profitable 12 month period of my 39 year career. And I didn't do anything extraordinary to do that. I just doubled down, doubled or tripled down on a couple of strategies that I was, that I was implementing before. And I created a new offering uh, but I was driven by a single question, what will meet the best of what my clients and audiences need and want? But I'm getting tired of hearing every story uh, or every speaker, every podcast interview, every expert opens up with, well, and I did too. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I fell into that trap too, but now I'm seeing it's time to just let that go. We have enough evidence of really positive things ha and happening. It doesn't mean we should not be compassionate, but we need to lead the way. Thank you, Mark. Um, let's hear from Harriet and then we'll go to Joe Palo. Great, thank you. Great to be able to join you today. My name's Harriet Russell. I work with and speak for organizations who want their people to work better together, both internally and across borders. So in the multicultural realm, doing business with ease overseas, building cross-cultural relationships that last is what my book is about. So I selected a title to say right up front, that's it. And I actually, for the logo, thank you, Henry, for being my publisher, the logo, I actually ran it by about 30 of my clients, the, the array of options, and this is what most of them chose, so that was it. So, and I love the little uh, sidebar here. Uh, what you need to know before arriving in another country. What, what worked for me in marketing my book, and well, first I'd like to preface, the reason I really calendared this call, which was, um, you know, I've been wanting to come on, is to find out more ways that I can market my book. It's, it was written in 2016. The things that worked for me early on is that um, I would use it as a bargaining tool if I was told that the budget for the speaker was only X amount, then I knew that they had an educational budget that might be different than an event budget. So I said, okay, I'll take that, but I want, uh, I want you to buy a hundred of my books for the audience. And so then I could, I could sell the book in that. So it was kind of a, a, a bargaining chip. Another thing that worked for me was um, it was a great gift or a giveaway during a speech when I would hold like a uh, the first one to answer this question, you know, uh, here's a gift or a thank you for the helper that set up the room for me. Here's my book. 
Uh, and so that was, uh, I would always care if you to give to people that were supportive or to use as a game uh, prize. Uh, the other thing that worked well was um, that for me personally, when I wrote the book, it really helped me structure all the ideas into one place. And now what I'm wanting to do is use that book and break it apart and repurpose the certain sections and chapters of it into you know, online learning or one smaller workshop or mastermind and such. So I'm looking forward to tearing it apart and re-putting it back again. Another thing that um, worked for me was, I'm looking at my notes here, uh, just having a book itself. The first thing when I asked Mark uh, for our pinpoint coaching the first time, what, what can I do with my work? Is write a book. Then it was a year with Henry. Then I wrote the book. Then I came back to Mark. So just having the book, I do believe is a distinguishing factor and being able to streamline everything with the URL, the book title, the new business name, the name of the workshops, all streamlined helped um, me get refined and focused into this is my topic. This is who I am. This is my platform. Let's, let's uh, look at this. Uh, now with the business overseas, I'm, I'm wanting to shift it to the internal multicultural teams that I've been working with all along here in the United States. So maybe I'll just have to write another book or uh, change the title and edit it differently. But for right now, um, those are what worked for me. Uh, oh, and as a very expensive business card, when I was approaching a corporation, I would call, I would send the book, I would follow up or I would hand deliver the book to the lobby of a local company uh, uh, for someone that I'd been referred to. What, uh, what I've found right now is that I haven't been doing anything to market it. Sales have dropped, Amazon is not working. And uh, I would like to really revive my, um, my approaches to how to market my book. And that's why I'm here. I'm looking forward to everyone's uh, input. Thank you. Thank you, Harriet. I'm going to respond a little to this and then uh, give the talking stick to Mark if he'd like it too. Um, Mark and I decided a few years ago that we weren't going to have a book plan. We were going to have a books plan. So we come out with a new book, at least one every year. Mm -hmm. And because then we have something new to talk about mm -hmm. and uh, new events and each book can be a brand. So uh, build your consulting practice. By the way, uh, Harriet, you did such a great job holding your book up, keeping it there so everybody could read it, look at it, study the real estate with that little um, um, the, the banner, the swipe banner at the top. Uh, but anyway, Mark and I did two hour session this morning on build your consulting practice. We want to do a three hour real soon for people. And that's just one brand in one year. Um, the other thing to build on your thing, a book, you can give it away. Another part about giving it away, and let's say you have a workbook and the workbook in your book, you sell for $100. Um, and you know, Mark and I are about not doing this the cheesy way. If it's the cheesy way you see another speaker do it, don't do that. Do it the opposite. So you have to do this in a non-cheesy way. Um, I, there's an author on here. I don't want him to share the cheese that he had to go through recently, but uh, I get it and it's not right. Okay, but you can say to the meeting host, and I've done this, um, oh, Mark, is it okay if I give away $100? And Mark's gonna say, sure, if he's the meeting host. And I said, well, I'd like to give away my workbook and my book. Um, they sell for $100. I'm going to give it away now. But when you do that as a setup, you now have permission from the audience to, well, what is this thing you charge $100 for that you're going to give away? As opposed to if I went into a thing about today and today only, I'm going to bundle these two things and offer them for $100. And uh, you know, I'll be signing books at the back of the room. Um, you know, I'm sorry, I only brought half a case today. You know, all these cheesy things 
Um, the opposite, if you, if you go with generosity, but it gives you permission to talk about it. And I say permission, there's a permission that goes back and forth between the speaker and the audience. And we've all seen people who violate the permission and it's uncomfortable, it's awkward. We never want you to go there. Also, it's not uh, the best strategy. It doesn't win in the end. So Mark, did you have anything you wanted to add to that or to Harriet's comment? Um, thank you, Henry. And I, <clears throat> if you're not familiar with uh, John Kramer, and I think he's J-O-N, K-R-E-M-E-R. -E -E uh, John Kramer wrote the two-inch Bible on marketing your book. I believe the title is 1001 Ways to Market Your Book. Um, his book is so heavy, it can be a, a weapon if someone breaks into your home. So if you wanna, if you want a thousand and one ideas to market your book, I would suggest you invest in John Kramer's. It was funny, I was talking with somebody early this morning and, and that book came up and she said, you know, Mark, I ordered that book. I never even opened it up because I was afraid of it. And I said, true confession, same here. Um, the, the idea of marketing my book with a thousand and one, I'm sure there's some gold in there. Um, but, but Henry and I, you know, gosh, over the course of time, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not one or two million dollars of work because of the book. And one way that I also use it um, is pre-COVID in person, um, especially with groups of 20 or 40 or even 80. Um, you know, my first book, uh, Growing Your Business, the one that put me on the map, um, I'd bring 50 copies or however many, and I'd always have one. This is a small mass market paperback book. I'd have it in my sport coat pocket. And at the appropriate time, I had a bit, a uh, comedy bit about the book. And I'd pull it out and it's like, just what you were waiting for, the book and the offer today. And everybody would be kind of laughing and groaning. And it's like, well, you knew I was gonna pull it out at some point, you know? Uh, and I'll be signing books in the back. Uh, but, I, but what I want you to know is I'm incredibly proud of this book. And um, Susan, um, your meeting planner today, made it possible for each of you to get a complimentary copy uh, of my book. And all of a sudden I made, the, I made the, um, the meeting planner look like a hero. I did not lie. She made it possible by having me there. And I made the decision to surprise not only her, but everyone in the audience. And I, I, own, I only speak to right and perfect fit audiences. Jot that down. Mark only speaks to right and perfect fit audiences. I don't speak to good fit audiences. I certainly don't speak to bad or wrong fit audiences anymore. <laughs> um, and so if I give away 40 books or 80 books uh, in a presentation, they're now going in the hands of 80 prospects for uh, my own events, including the Achiever Circle or um, prospects in the hands of people who might hire me to consult or coach. Um, but another thing that has been very impactful just happened again last week. I had a conversation with a prospect in Pennsylvania uh, for a coaching program, and he has heard me speak before. And uh, I said, you know, after we get off uh, the line, um, in fact, I don't even know if I told him. Half the time, I don't even tell them I'm going to do this, but I will just forward 
the prospect, um, the electronic version of my book. Uh, may or may not also put it in the mail, uh, but I want to get it in their hands right away. I got a $10,000 booking for a breakout session uh, at a meeting once because I sent the electronic version of growing your business and the decision maker opened it up or opened up the file and riffled through. And I wanna say on the fourth, the fourth page, I have a graphic of a fun meter button. And he um, shared the story when he introduced me, he goes, you know, Mark sent me a copy, the electronic version of his book, Growing Your Business. I opened up the file. I stopped at page uh, four because there was a graphic of a fun meter button. That's all I needed to know. I thought, okay, this author is of a different stripe or different type and, and uh, booked it because of that darn little fun meter button illustration. So I've made great use of the electronic version. I just did a presentation in Calgary uh, about a month ago and I made the electronic version um, of our book, Defining You, available to all of the participants. So using the electronic version, especially in times of COVID, can be uh, an amazing value add to your audiences or negotiation point. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Mark. Let's go to uh, Joe Palo and then John Lockhorst. Hello, I'm Joe Palo. I'm in Shoreview, Minnesota. Uh, the title of my book is How to Say Nothing Better Than Everybody Else which I don't have a book, it's still being worked on. Uh, I think we hopefully get it out in July. Um, as far as regards to a certain tip or strategy for my book, um, I do like the idea of a targeted, small scale breakfast brief or something like that. Um, very targeted. Um, I've got, fortunately I've got connections around the country with big, good organizations. Um, so that would be one aspect. The licensing piece, I do have interest in that because I'll be at capacity and I can't, they can only do so much. Um, and the last piece is I have a firm belief in uh, reciprocity. It works. If you help someone else, they will help you out. If you help someone else get what they want, you'll get what you want. If you give something away, it'll come back. And it might not necessarily been for, be from the person you gave it to. Great. The law of reciprocity is so interesting. It's, you know, call it karma, call it kismet, call it what you will. Um, and even old Zig Ziglar used to talk about this, that, uh, you know, uh, the good's coming back. You just don't know where it's coming from. Um, I, I believe in that. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, John, new author, John Lockhorst, you're up. Thanks, Henry. I'm John Lockhorst. I am from... Andover, Minnesota, just a hop, skip, and a jump from Joe Palo. And Mark is holding it up, and I, I will do the same. I am the author of Mission Critical Leadership, How Smart Managers Lead Well in All Directions. Just uh, had the grand opening launch last week. So really excited to uh, get this out into the world and see what it'll do, not just for me, but more importantly for my readers and for my audiences. Uh, I'm a leadership coach, keynote speaker, a leadership trainer, and also uh, the a writer and author. And I, I think for me, Henry, right now, it's all brand new, but I would say what I'm finding real helpful right now is using the book as a tool to refresh some conversations and some relationships with uh, current and former clients, also contacts in the speaking world. And one of the fun things that I've done, and it was almost, I think it was by mistake, it was actually an oversight, but then I found it to be kind of fun uh, and, and did it again a few times where I was talking to somebody and the book would come up. And then after I got off the call, I realized, oh, I never offered to send them a copy of the book. And then I'd send them an email. We talked about the book, but I'd, I'd also like to send you a copy. Can you give me the right email, uh, right mailing address that I can send it to? And then they would send an email back saying how much they appreciated that. And then quite often, once they got the actual book, they would uh, send another email to, to thank me for that. So I found that that's been helpful in just refreshing some of those relationships 
and also as I've uh, talked to new speaking opportunities, it, it almost seals the deal, you know, where it's like, oh, oh yeah, we definitely want you to ha have you come and would, would you talk about the book? You know, I don't even have to you know, suggest it as a title. It's like, well, can you come and tell us more about the book? So that's been uh, fun, but just really getting started and looking forward to learning new ways to leverage the book as a tool for marketing and promotion. John, I know we're going to talk more one-on-one -on -one pretty soon, and I'm trying to get you into the retreat and other things, but uh, there's just a lot ahead for you. Um, and I know other people, uh, Megan and some others are facing the same thing. You can't do it all at once. You know, Mark's talking about the book. I think this is the problem, a thousand one ways to market your book. It's so overwhelming. Um, you don't want to open it up because it's just overwhelming. But the basics, the fundamentals uh, are what apply. Small scale seminars, getting on somebody's stage, you know, the showcase strategy. Um, Mark uh, puts uh, another person and me on his stage, on his achiever circle. You know, we get uh, 17 minutes. So it's like, why would I do that? To get the 17 minutes. <laughs> You know, 17 minutes in front of a target rich audience is what we all need. You're all on this call today. Um, it's not necessarily that this is your target rich audience. This is your referral rich audience. These are your uh, champions and maybe your affiliates. We can talk more about that if you want. Uh, but we're getting uh, two thirds of our business now from our sector five and sector six, our advocate sector and affiliate sector. Um, some of you are in it. Um, you might got, uh, got some baseball cards from me this month. You may have got some uh, flower seeds last month. Um, a weird kind of dental pick uh, in February. Anyway, a little trinket every month because it's not their job to remember you, to quote Patricia Fripp. It's your job to remind them that you exist. And these are the people that can lead us to speaking engagements, to clients, to publicity. So be thinking about that. Well, let's go to, uh, oh, someone who has lost has been found. Uh, the house rejoiced. That's what you call a publishing uh, business is the house. So the house rejoiced today at the production meeting that Joyce is back. Joyce, welcome. Uh, tell us about yourself and the book. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, because you're chewing? I'm like the waitress at Denny's. I wait till your mouth's full to ask you, hey, uh, you good, hon? Need any more coffee? Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, by the way, speaking of referrals, Henry, did you get a call from Peter, who lives in San Diego, who was looking for a publisher? Not yet. Ah, I'll have to put a fire, light a fire under him. Well, I appreciate you doing that. Well, yeah, no I mean, problem. not lighting the fire, but just mentioning this. <laughs> no problem. So <clears throat> my name is Joyce Joya. And I have written a book called Experience Rules, How Positive Experiences Will Drive Profit into the Future. Uh, this is my sixth and first solo book. I used to own a small publishing company, not dissimilar from indie books. I am a certified speaking professional and certified management consultant. And last year was named an FIMC, which is a fellow of the Institute of Management Consultants, which is basically the consulting hall of fame. I'm a futurist and my book forecasts the rise of a new person in the ozone called the CEXO, whose job it will be to coordinate all of the advertising, messaging, and branding for all of the different stakeholder groups, not just employees and customers. And the book highlights what organizations can do with each of those different stakeholder groups to connect and engage at a deeper level 
so that they drive more profit. Because we know that the better the experiences are that organizations deliver to their stakeholders, the more highly engaged they are. And the more highly engaged they are, the more profit we're going to drive. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, we look forward to hearing more about it and your, and your plans to conquer the world. <laughs> and I do. And, and I have one small idea to share. Yes, please. It's a, it's a very nifty one that, that my late partner, Roger, came up with. And that is, it's a coupon. And I have a template for those coupons if anybody wants to email me at joyce at hermangroup.com. And the way that it works is you put one under each seat in a large group when you're working not in associations, but rather for a company. And the way it works is that anyone who buys your book gets to use a $10 coupon and the company pays the $10, but the key is the company doesn't pay the $10 unless the person buys the book. And what that means is that the company gets to not only engage with the, its employees and give them something extra, but also they get to know that that employee has some skin in the game. That employee has invested on his or her own. So it, it's a, an idea that worked really well for us with certain clients. Obviously, if you're doing associations, it, it doesn't work unless you have a sponsor for your books, but um, it, it does work with companies very nicely. That's a genius idea. I, uh, coming out of continuing education, adult continuing education, dirty little secret, only 20% of the employee education dollars companies put up are, is used. In other words, companies would be willing to spend five times more than what they're spending. Also, the employees they value the most, there's three things. One, they show up continually for work. Two, they show up on time for work. This is at any level, by the way. <laughs> but three, they're interested in learning new things like on their own time or books or uh, sessions, the things that we do. Uh, because the world is changing so much, we need people working with us who are willing to change and adapt. Um, so thank you for all that. Uh, let's go, who? Oh, let's go to Kim and then Megan. Um, Kim Nagel, you're up. Kim, are you on mute or maybe you had to drop off? No, there's Kim. Um, Kim, we can't hear you. <laughs> How do we tell Kim this? It was quite eloquent, whatever she said. Yeah, it was great. Let me see if it says you're muted. Well, it, it says you're not muted. You want to try it again, Kim? Oh, it's like a silent movie. Kim, I'm going to let you try to figure this out and we're going to come back to you. Uh, Megan Kent, tell us about your book. Me uh, Megan, you're, let's see. <laughs> Megan's muted. There we go. Megan, welcome. Okay, thank you. First of all, doesn't this read backwards? No, to us, it's a mirror effect. It reads great. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so my book is Build an Irresistible Brand, Harness the Power of Universal Human Instincts, um, Learn the Seven Brain-Friendly Branding Drivers, so that you can stop wasting resources and attract customers effortlessly and keep them for life. So here's the real estate that we were told to hold. Um, I just found out that my book is going to be printed on June 7th. 
So I'm working on my, what did you call them, Henry? My 100, my, my 100 people. Um, Your opportunity just, 100 list. Yeah, I'm working on that. I just did finish my first two part small scale seminar just to try to workshop a lot of the principles in my book, um, which was great, really informative. Um, and I'm working on getting on Amazon and Kindle. And now I feel like I have to make a website around it so that I can get speaking gigs and tell people more about the book. So I'm kind of in the weeds right now. Um, I appreciate your comment about you don't have to do everything at once because I, oh, oh I'm, a, I'm also scheduling four launch parties, no, five launch events. I don't even really know what that is, but I'm booking one in LA, San Francisco, Sacramento, and two in New York where I live. So you're doing live events. Yeah, but they're going to be with people I know. Okay. One of my authors called me the other day and said somebody wanted to have lunch. And she said, Henry, what in the hell is lunch? And I said, well, in former times, we used to go share a meal around <laughs> midday with people to develop business contacts. Uh, yeah. So well, maybe this, come is, back. this is going to be at the end of June and in July. And I'm just praying the world's back to normal by then. We're getting there. Um, Megan, I, may I pay you a compliment? OK. <laughs> you, you were a little like hesitant. OK. <laughs> what, you afraid it's a, afraid it's a trap? No. Um, you've upped your video presence game. It's noticeable. Oh. You've been doing better. You're doing better things. You're working on it, aren't you? Well, yeah. And I haven't even uh, taken Patrick's class yet. And I spoke to him today about that. <laughs> but thank you. Well, that's good. I mean, and David Goldman can speak to it. I know Mark and I can. Um, we didn't go from <laughs> day one, like, ugh, it was horrible, to this. I mean, it's been a journey and trying different things and uh, we can talk about it. But it's a message to everybody. We're living our life on Zoom. Um, video is not going away even when we get back to normal. Uh, John Lockhorse just had a great book launch online. Uh, Mason Harris, he's not with us today, but Mason Harris, we published, had a great book launch uh, online and a lot of energy to these things. Um, so can you know, I just ask a question about that? Like yeah. Uh, is there somebody that tells you what that is and what it looks like and how to do it? Uh, Devin, Devin's not on the line today, but Devin can chat with you about that. Um, Suzanne also helps produce some, so we'll give advice. If other people, uh, we, we had to create a new service because people were saying, yeah, well, what if you just did it for us? Well, okay, so we there's a cost associated. We'll tell them that, but we'll either tell you how to do it or quote you a price if you wanted us to run it. Um, the advantage of a producer is big because yeah. you can be worried about content and presence and you don't have to be worried about the trains running on time and the, uh, the other things happening. Uh, Tom okay. Searcy, one of our authors who uh, has been with us sometimes, and he credits his book to $13 million. Um, he was the one who was like over a year ago, said, uh, you need to hire a producer, Henry. There's a person out there who, you know, you would turn it over to that person and uh, that person would produce what you did. Uh, that person's Suzanne. Um, you know, we're so happy we found her and um, she seems to be happy with us. She says nice things. So it's a nice relationship to have that. That's, uh, as Mark pointed out to me early and to a lot of you, he has the angel known as Kylie. Um, when we started Indie Books, we found Devin uh, because you need that person who's the control tower to keep things running. Um, and then your next evolution is probably a producer. And this is part-time and uh, to help you produce your events and get bodies into the events. So those are some things we've learned along the way that, um, you know, nobody achieves anything great alone. They have help. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely need help with that for sure. I have no idea. Yeah, we can talk about that. 
um, and it's good to see you again. Uh, and I think I saw you on the calendar. So uh, I look yeah, forward to talking week. to you soon. Next week. Thanks. Uh, Steve Brody from Houston. Steve, how are you? Hi, Henry. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm doing fine. Um, my, uh, my book is, uh, was published a, a few years ago and it's called, it's called what, what happens after the sale, uh, insights about the business and personal journey after the big event. So, uh, this is a, this is a case study. It's a material that I created from one of my CEO members, one of my Vistage members and, and wrote a book about the, the, uh, the process of him going through selling his company and then, and then what comes next? So it's not just about exit or exit planning. It, it really overlaps the whole strategic planning subject that may culminate in how you exit your company. And the way I use that, frankly, and it was more um, frequent in, in times when I was with people directly as opposed to virtual, but with every candidate or every prospect that I met, uh, with an interview that I would bring that book along and, and use it as a gift for that person and take them through the message about someday, someday at some point in time, they will exit their company. And uh, hopefully they'll exit in a vertical basis as opposed to horizontal, which means you exit walking out instead of being, being carried out when, it, when it's not your choice. But it, it, it really deals with the challenge in a privately held company of what happens and where are you going and what does that longer term future look like? So uh, I've noted an interesting idea that one of you said about use with the uh, centers of influence, uh, give copies to them and let them hand that out for you. And, and, and I like that one uh, as, as some things to, to look into. Uh, and then in the virtual world, I can mail it to people. I also have an electronic version, which, uh, which I can send, uh, dealing with the same topic of, of their future and their direction is, is really what the, uh, what the key focus is on. So uh, two quick things, and I recognize that uh, Jerry O'Brien, who talked earlier, recognized his name, I think. I used to be a Vistage chair for many years, for 20 years. And Jerry, I think you were one of the, you were one, or maybe still are one of the Vistage speakers. Is, 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 that a, is that a correct statement? It is. You know, it's funny. I thought I recognized you. I'm like, I'm, I recognize that guy. Yes. And so now I mostly speak at Vistage Executive Summits. However, during uh, COVID, I was able to do a lot of individual groups because it was just easy to do it from my house. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And I invited someone and he's on the line today. Uh, Henry, his name is Nick. You'll see on his name, he goes by, uh, by uh, uh, a site called Nicknosis, and you might predict that that is about uh, hypnotism. And I thought I would uh, challenge him today and see if he'd be willing to hypnotize everybody on this call. Uh, no, he, he didn't know that, but, <laughs> but he, can, he can maybe talk to some of that of what he's, uh, how he's done that, but it's an interesting development. And he's gonna be moving to Austin, Texas. So he, he's gonna become a Texan. So. I wanted him to meet you, Henry, and, and get in tune with some of this uh, this activity. Yeah, but um, Austin's not a part of Texas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you that. Um, well, 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 it's different, that's for sure. It's, it's different. So um, Steve's, as he mentioned, former chair of Vistage. I want to share something one of our authors uh, is having great success with. You know, they came to us at the start of the year and said, what can we do more? You know, I'm a Vistage speaker. I used to speak a lot at Vistage, not speaking now. Um, so we have, on his behalf, um, poses him on LinkedIn. And we've gone to all the Vistage chairs and we have some basic scripts and entrees to say hello and start a conversation. And when one gets going, we turn it over to him. So it's not like the robots uh, combing it, but it's the basic things that um, just uh, offering a, a message. Um, Suzanne, can I put you on the spot? Like what's a typical message that might be 
that we send out on that just on a on a first go round? Usually we send out a message uh, that just asks if they would like to link in with us. Uh, and sometimes we will add a sentence about where we met them or what we have in common. We'll offer them free copies of the book. He has a service that he does. He offers them, you know, for their members, if he wants to take advantage, it's a free service. It's a very generous, generous approach at the start. Well, the result has been, he's been getting bookings, he's been getting engagement with groups and all this. Um, he would be too busy to do this, the initial outreach. So he is having us, you know, do it for him. Um, and then when it's something that's a question, we turn it over to him right away. So that's another thing to think there. Um, he's been very excited about the results and the energy that this is brings. Also, uh, per Mark's advocate strategy uh, from growing your business, um, on his behalf, I, I had him give me all his advocates and we communicate with them every month and the advocates have been blown away. It's like, oh, you know, it's so great to hear from you. And thanks for the little gift. And hey, yeah, we should be doing things together. And it's created a lot of energy in the business. So um, when I'm in California, I say the universe rewards activity. When I'm back in Minnesota, I say the Lord helps those who help themselves. I'm bilingual. I can talk about the universe and the Lord. It's the same concept about, you said, reciprocation. Um, there's got to be something that goes out. The book in the mail that goes out. Mark Stormstarter strategy about the contacts. And they're not sales calls. Um, if you don't know about the storm starter strategy, uh, we have ways you can learn about it. It's in build your consulting practice among others, but it's about planting seeds. And it's not, what can I sell you today? A lot of it is, how are you doing? What's going on? Um, <laughs> I found that it's just becoming this natural thing. I start calling people up and see how they're doing. And then they say, oh, I wanted to talk to you about my next book. I, I quit saying, oh, that's not why I called. <laughs> I used to say that. Well, that's not why I called. I'm like, well, if you want to talk about that, sure, we can. Um, just encouraging the same thing with you. Be interested in your clients, your past clients, your, your friendlies, those people who know you. Um, and then don't ignore the sector ones, which we call are the strangers, the, the friends you haven't met yet. Um, still reach out to them. LinkedIn is a great tool for that. And Suzanne gave a great hint there, and Ellen Moore in her session with us covered it, is don't just be a robot. Um, talk, when you ask for a connection, talk about how you are connected. Um, you know, that there is something, oh, you're both, um, you know, you're both connected to Vistage, or you're both connected to the Institute of Management Consultants, or whatever the connection is, uh, mention it. Um, goes a long way. Uh, thanks, Steve. Oh, Dr. Carey uh, is with us. Uh, love to hear from Dr. Carey. Um, if you could unmute and, and tell us what's going on. Hi, guys. I am brand new to Henry's group, so thank you for having me here today. My name is Dr. Carey, and I'm a psychologist in Denver, Colorado, and I have an upcoming book called Self-Help on the Go, and it is 99 of my favorite tips and tricks and strategies to navigate life's typical ups and downs. So I come at things from a philosophy that you're not broken, but you probably need a few tools to manage life's day-to-day -day operations. So that is where I'm starting with and coming from. And Henry, you'll be very excited because I'm already talking about the book and talking about the title and um, have gotten three guest spots on podcasts just this week. So nice. Nice. Uh, June 17th and 18th, I got to talk to you about that. We need to get you into the author's retreat. And that would uh, be great. I just need to know the time of it. Sure. I'll get that to you. Awesome. Um, yeah, I really liked your book because 
it was a, you're not broken, but you could be better. You could be happier. Yep. Uh, yeah, you can get a tune up from the neck up. Uh, <laughs> That's what Zig Ziglar used to say, a checkup from the neck up. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of, we all need that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're excited to be publishing your book. It's great. Thanks. Um, well, I, I, Nick, we haven't met, but if you want uh, the talking stick for one minute, you can have it. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, Henry, and thanks, Steve, for inviting me. Um, my name is Nick Aguirre. I go by Nick Gnosis, and I'm a high-performance hypnotist. If you don't know what that is, uh, I use focus exercises to help leaders and salespeople perform at the highest level. So um, yeah, very excited to be here and uh, extremely interested in public speaking. I have a background as a professor of digital media, so um, very comfortable in front of audiences, but mm -hmm. I do have ambitions of getting a, you know, a book together someday. So really excited to be here. I used to know a guy who was a professor by day and a stage hypnotist by night. And he published books under two different names. And one was about, well, hypnosis, but more about, you know, the mind and all this. And the other was very academic on semantics and these other things. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so you're the second, you sound like the second one I'm meeting. So thanks for being with us today. Well, yep, thanks, thanks for the round table. Um, it's, uh, uh, and be honest, show of thumbs, you know, was, was this a good session? We were talking about doing these maybe quarterly so you get to meet each other and uh, share. Um, if you could, uh, yeah, if you liked it, a thumbs up, great. And we'll, we'll keep doing these. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you to my co-host, uh, Mark LeBlanc for his insights today and thanks to all of you for sharing and I think it was a good look at how we can all have more impact and influence to Mark's point we're never discovered we never have made it in this field we're always striving to bring our work to more people and to have more impact on their lives so uh, I think it's the journey worth going on and thanks for being on the journey with us so until next week, uh, Henry DeRee signing off on the podcast for Marketing with a Book.